welcome to the micro communication course today we see a dish antenna or a reflector antenna here so now uh, we have seen that a horn antenna that horn antenna that is the extended version of a waveguide and one end of this waveguide will be flared and then that structure is called as a horn antenna and that horn antenna is used as a primary antenna for this dish antenna or a reflector antenna so to understand the dish antenna so we need to understand that first what do you mean by the reflector antenna the reflector antenna means what it reflects the signal from the uh the structure so that's why this antenna is called as a reflector antenna so if you consider that dish antenna dish antenna is belong this antenna belongs to the reflector antenna because that metallic structure reflect the microwave signal okay now this antenna work at a micro frequency if you if you use a low frequency then so then uh, that particular signal will not be reflected by the um, metallic object but if you consider that a microwave frequency signal then that microwave frequency signal will be reflected by the dish structure there so that is about one of the character one of the characteristics of a micro so that that micro micro uh, micro is act as a reflector when it come as come across the metallic body or a metallic structure there now this uh, particular antenna work the frequency of a 1 gigahertz to a 100 gigahertz that is about a operating frequencies and this antenna can be used as a transmitter transmitting antenna as well as a receiving antenna uh, at a micro frequencies and this antenna has a high gain and a narrow beam width okay so means you can say that this antenna it has a high gain and a narrow beam width so narrow means it is depending upon that a eh, whatever the structure we have and narrow beam or we talk about the narrow beam it doesn't matter and this antenna can be work in both the plane vertical plane as well as the horizontal plane okay so that's about a reflector antenna so now we'll see that what are the various types of a reflector antenna okay it will work in both the plane that we say vertical or a horizontal plane okay so that is about a horizontal plane here it works here so there are the various types of a reflector okay types of a reflector one is about a rod over here rod reflector rod reflector means just like a dipole here okay and that uh, dipole is present in a yagi wood antenna and in a yagi wood antenna that uh, one atom is there in a given antenna there are three elements one element is about a active element other director small and another element that will act as a, a reflector there so that is about a in a given antenna that dipole or that dipole rod or dipole antenna will be act as a, a reflector so that is called as a, a reflector antenna one of the type of the reflector antenna then a plane reflector okay the so plane reflector means what we have a signal reflected uh, in a desired direction so that is called a plane reflector suppose if we consider that this is nothing but a plane here and we have the focus point here so, or we can say that a feed now now if supposed to be signal come out from the feed here so then it will be reflected back okay that is about what you can say that a a plane reflector so or we can say that in the given direction so whichever the direction that is to be reflected there so that is called this particular portion is called as a a reflector here this particular portion is called as a reflector it reflect the signal in desired direction then uh, a corner reflector now if you consider the corner reflector it's just like a metallic plate or a you can say that a metallic object and the structure of that metallic object it looks like a corner one okay so just like if you 
see that a wire grid okay mostly you see that on a tower this type of antenna is there so it has a a grid there wire grid okay now it is like a like a structure here and this particular wire grid this one is called as a, a corner reflector okay this, this one so this one is about a center beam center rod as well as we need uh, another rod that is about a supporting rod and these are all these are nothing but a grid wire and that each and every wire grid wire means nothing but a, a dipole okay wire okay and it has some specific distance okay, in between each grid it has some specific distance and that directivity and everything for the given particular antenna is depending upon that what will be the height of this whatever the plane we have and what will be the diameter okay that is about a aperture size so this one if you see here if i cut the section of this corner reflector or that particular grid wire so this will be looks like a, a reflector now so here it has a feed or you can say that a focus okay and then uh, whenever the signal come out from this feed so it will be reflected in the given direction okay this way yeah so this one is called as a a corner reflector and this whatever we say that this size is nothing but the aperture size means that's about a front portion or we can say that a open portion of the uh, reflector here so that is about it you can say that this one if, if you consider that just like a whatever the structure we supposed to consider that has a, a portion of what we can say it is about a, a reflector so i see from, if you see that this one is about our page here okay so likewise i just hold this page now so this one is about a center rod here okay and this particular portion is supposed to be i've used a focus at this particular point so then it will reflect your signal in the given direction there okay that is this one is called as a, a corner reflector here. and then each and every we can say that for a given particular corner reflector this one is about a height we consider this one is about height this one is about aperture that's about a front opening portion or if you consider that for a particular structure this is nothing but a aperture here okay so this one is called as a aperture here and for this grid this one is nothing but a length okay this one is about a length of this particular aperture and this is the spacing between the a two wire if you increase the spacing okay so according to that your what you can say that a concentration of signal will be different okay so, so we need to find out what will be the spacing between the two signals so that we'll get that high gain and a, uh, that highly direct directional signal there okay so that spacing again it depends upon uh, spacing if it is increased then a radiation resistance changes. so that's why i'm saying that directivity and gain will be increased if that spacing is a small then radi radiation resistance will be sw small there and that's why if radiation resistance is small then the efficiency of that antenna is going to be reduced there if the spacing is a large there okay if that spacing between the grid wire if it is a large there then what happen here so that reflector will provide a multiple lobe there okay we are expecting that from the corner reflector so we will get the a single lobe here okay so it, then if that spacing will be large so it will provide the a multiple lobes there. so likewise so that is about what we can say that if if that spacing will be large then it will provide the a multiple reflector but if you compare that that whatever the aperture size so according to that the dimensions of a main lobe it will be a larger there okay so dimension of this particular lobe is a larger and since it has it it has a multiple wires okay so this particular corner reflector is act as a array antenna there okay so because it has a multiple arrays or a multiple uh, multiple wires so that's why it, that structure is called as a array there and so that's why for a given array antenna so what will be the radiation power and that radiation power is depending upon that what will be the spacing and how much will be the speed we are going to be providing to the given antenna and this type of an antenna mostly used in a radar application there okay so it's rotating one because if that structure is about a small one okay lightweight so that's why it will be 
used as a uh, used uh, on a error earlier or a vehicle okay so that will be moving and uh, that uh, antenna is going to be rotating there then a cylindrical reflector now cylindrical reflector now this one is about you know the structure of a cylinder now okay now in that case this one is the portion is going to be reflected okay so now this one is about a cylindrical reflector now in that case here at the axis at the center of the cylinder okay so there will be a antenna is to be placed that antenna can be a dipole antenna multiple dipole antennas can be used as a feeding antenna here and that cylindrical shape can be a uh, it looks like a parabolic one okay okay this one is a potential cylindrical antenna so we can see that a cylindrical reflector there then we have the a on reflector there okay because we we are using a main antenna uh, that is about a, a parabolic reflector now so in that case we supposed to consider that a horn antenna as a reflector one or we can say that it will be as a primary one that is about a fade so it will propagating the signal and then it will be reflecting there so likewise that is about a a horn reflector antenna or we can say that a spherical reflector antenna again one more topic we say that is about a, a spherical reflector antenna and that spherical reflector antenna it is nothing but a reflector that reflector is of a, a spherical shape okay so now these are about the antenna now we come come to the our topic a dish antenna so that is that belongs to the a reflector family there and that reflector antenna which has a parabolic shape here okay that reflector antenna which has a parabolic shape so that antenna is called as a dish antenna there or a parabolic reflector we say that parabolic reflector so mostly if you see that what is the dish antenna at our home so that antenna has a parabolic reflector there so to understand the parabolic reflector we need supposed to understand first what is the geometry of this a parabolic reflector here. so this one is about your parabola now okay i supposed to consider that all people are able to see here clearly now okay so this one is about your a parabolic structure now and for the each and every parabola here so there is some particular focus or a, a focal point so generally we say that a focal point or we say it is about a focus here and from the given particular focus okay so this one is about your and see here this one is about your aperture now it's not necessary that focus is at the on the aperture itself okay so focus can be at any point here and now this one is about the aperture now okay so now this one is about the aperture side so we can say that this one is about the aperture now okay and at the focus if you see here from the focus if we use a feed now okay if you consider that a feed here at this particular focus so now it provides the signal there okay it will come out a signal now and then it will be propagating in this given particular plane here. so this one is about a plane wave front okay so if we want to change the wave front from the spherical to plane so you can use a parabolic reflector so we have the a plane wave front we are getting okay this one is, or we can say that is about a plane waves okay the plane waves means vertical okay so vertical or horizontal just like where we get the field component for this plane wave front now this one is a focus and from this okay this parabolic okay if we consider that this one is nothing but the axis this one is about a axis now okay now this one is called as a axis of a, a parabola now on the axis from this point to this particular focus point this called as this one is called as a, a focal length and this particular portion okay whatever the we have this particular portion is called as a, a focal length uh, this this one particular called as focal length and this particular portion is called as a vertex here okay vertex means what in this particular region at the parabolic there and then uh, we consider that 
so from this from this to this okay so this one okay so from this if you consider that that particular region okay that is called as a, a direct resistance okay this one is called as a direct resistance. and this one is nothing but a your what you can say that a diameter of the parabola here or you can say that aperture now okay this one is about a diameter of a, a parabola there. and if you consider that so what will be the aperture here so in that case we need to find out from the diameter as well as the from the what will be the a focal length here. so from that we can find out the aperture of the parabola okay so aperture area this one okay so this one belongs to we can say that a aperture area so now if you consider that in terms of a number i am writing okay this one a we can say that here we can say that whatever whatever the focus we have is about a b okay so a b c d now this one is about a focal length this one c to d here this one is about what you can say that it about a direct is there c to d this one is about say that that is about the diameter okay this one is a part of a, a diameter now then if you consider that a radiation pattern for this antenna it has only a single lobe but there will be a side lobe again occur because there is a focus and whenever the focus is there and that focus will propagating the signal so then some of the signal may be come out from this particular region so that is this one particular portion is called as a noise or we can say that a spillover and that occur because of the what of the adjustment of the focus point or a focus antenna there okay if the diameter is a small or a large according to that there will be a spillover occur now generally people are using the antenna as a transmitting antenna or a receiving antenna if supposed to be we are using as a transmitting antenna so then this one is about a direction so we will get that a signal will be directed in the given direction okay so now it's supposed to be wanted to use this antenna as a receiver one so then that signal will reach to the focus now focal point okay and then this one we have a primary feed antenna primary antenna there so all the rays are concentrated at this particular focus so we can use here a horn antenna or we can use here a dipole antenna okay so so that's why whichever the antenna we are using at a focus so the, all the rays will be concentrated at that particular focus point if we are using as a receiving antenna if we are using as a transmitting antenna so this antenna will radiate the signal so then it will reach to the parabola it will be reflected from the parabola and then it will propagate in a, a space there okay that is about a plane and this side lobes occur because of the sp lobe here means we generally we are expecting that there will be a, only a main lobe but we are getting that a multiple low multiple low we are getting because of that there will be a spill over in the uh, antenna there then we find out here what will be the radiation pattern we are getting so, so from that if supposed to be i am going to draw the radiation pattern now okay now this one is about a radiation pattern now this one is about a side lobes we are getting okay so this one is about a main lobe we consider that this one is about a main lobe then what will be the beam width here so there are the two beam width we supposed to find out for the understanding the radiation pattern of an parabolic antenna or a parabolic reflector antenna so one is about a half power beam width half power beam width means what whatever the 3 db points we are getting okay so that is nothing but a half power beam width and that half power beam width is generally we can write in terms of a whatever the wavelength we have and what will be the a diameter there okay so that's about a half power wavelength we have. then uh, we can talk about that a beam width between personal okay beam width between personal is equal to phi zero here and that phi zero is depending upon it phi is phi here so that's why it is equal to 140 lambda phi here. okay now how this come 
personal bimit personal bimit means what this one is the body main lobe this one is the body side lobe so this one okay personal means what so from main lobe to the side lobe so whatever the angle we are getting that is called as a personal bimit and this one is about a power bimit means what from this 3d b point whenever we draw the projection from the 3d b point and this angle is called as a half power bimit okay so this one is about a uh, what you can say that a personal bimit and a half power bimit here and this da is nothing but the mouth diameter of the parabolic reflector so this one okay so it's supposed to be consider that a parabolic reflector and for this we supposed to call it as a diameter that is called as a da with the diameter mouth diameter of the parabolic reflector now what is the directivity so directivity here for this parabolic reflector that is equal to d is equal to 9.8 7 that is da by lambda bracket square okay so now we know that that is a half power beam width and a personal beam width. but if you consider that here this one is about a half power beam width and personal beam width we are getting this one is for the a parabolic reflector okay all this directivity all these parameters we are getting for this what we can say that uh, to understand the what you can learn here uh, that is about a parabolic reflector. if we have that reflector if we have the large reflector uh, large mouth okay so in that case that aperture will be looks like a rectangular one so in that case a half power beam width will be 57.5 lambda and that l is nothing but the length of the aperture here. okay so l is nothing but the length of the aperture that, that is about a if it is a for a large uniformly inuplated rectangular aperture so in that case l will be the length here and lambda is the wavelength here. and in that case a power beam width will be likewise then a beam width between personal it will be what 115 lambda by l all the values are in a degree there and the directivity is equal to 4 pi a by a lambda square that a is nothing but the area okay that is about the area of the aperture area of the rectangular wave guide uh, re, uh, that rectangular aperture now. now what will be the capture area generally a capture area for the parabolic reflector it is depending upon that what will be the primary antenna we are using primary antenna means what okay so for a given parabolic antenna if you consider that there is a fo there is a main parabolic antenna this one okay so this one is called as a, a secondary this one is called as a secondary and here we supposed to use a dipole at a focus or a horn antenna okay i supposed to consider a horn antenna so this antenna is called as a primary antenna okay main antenna so because here is we have a feeding feed antenna is nothing but a primary antenna and this one is about a reflector parabolic structure is act as a reflector so this reflector is the called as a, a secondary antenna so then from the various speed if supposed to be we are using a instead of a horn okay suppose i am going to use a dipole one okay now this one is about a, a dipole antenna so i suppose to use dipole so in that case if supposed to be i am using a dipole antenna as a primary one so then what will be the capture area so capture area because this one is about an antenna so capture area is depending upon that what will be the exactly aperture area of an antenna this is about a and this b is a constant and that is depending upon the what type of a primary antenna we are using if supposed to be we are using a dipole antenna then b will be a 0.6 pi okay if supposed to be we are using a dipole antenna then it will be considered as a 0.6 pi for the dipole antenna okay that is if we are we have the dipole antenna but again 
we need to talk about the what will be the a power gain here okay so we see that power gain for the given antenna if your antenna is supposed to be considered as a lossless antenna okay if it is a lossless antenna then it is depending upon the what will be the capture area we have that is about an ac here okay that ac is depending upon that factor of the primary constant factor of the antenna if it is a dipole antenna if we have a, a circularly circular aperture okay we have a circular aperture one so in that case this one is for the rectangular aperture if we have a circular aperture then aperture we have the a is equal to what pi a square by 4 circular aperture parabola okay okay so this this one we have a parabola here so then in that case a that is about aperture area we are writing and the gain is equal to we say that is 6.4 if it is a dipole feed then so it will be a da by lambda if we are using a dipole feed okay otherwise we can write the a equation that is gp is equal to what we have a pi square k that is about a constant k for the what type of antenna we supposed to use here d square by lambda square okay so this one so this one we write a gain here. okay so gain of the antenna there then what are the feeding mechanism used okay so just we have seen that a what are various types of a reflector similarly we have the various types of a a parabolic reflector okay we have learned earlier the reflector now we have we will learn that a various type of a, a parabolic reflector and then we we'll talk about the what are the various speed is uh, we supposed to be used there. so one is about a cut paraboloid or we can say that a truncated paraboloid okay so in that case okay now this one is about your paraboloid okay so now cut paraboloid or a truncated paraboloid means what we supposed to use a cut section now this one so this one a section we supposed to cut here and then this particular section is to be used okay and this whatever the red portion we have that is considered as a, a cut portion and this portion is to be discarded now and this is called as a cut paraboloid or a what you can say that is a, a truncated paraboloid then a parabolic cylinder other case we say that so in the case of a parabolic cylinder here we supposed to find out this one is a body parabolic cylinder now so in that case we supposed to use a dipole as a feed now okay so that is about a, a parabolic cylinder so this one is about a section we have okay and this particular section is acts as a reflector that is a what you can say that is parabolic reflector here. then uh, a peel box antenna here so that is peel box antenna it means we can say that it is just like a cylindrical reflector it is enclosed one this one is about a cylindrical reflector a cylindrical reflector is enclosed one okay so likewise so this one is called as a, a peel box antenna okay so now another is about a offset paraboloid okay so we we have seen that a parabolic reflector in which we have considered that a feed is at the focus point so another case is about a parabolic reflector we have to learn that is about a offset feed okay so offset feed means what on instead of a on axis it is about a off axis in that case the feed will be here okay so now we 
we consider that this one is about the axis here and for this this one is about the axis so in that case here is the feed it is to be placed off axis antenna so now just like reach to the reflector and then it will be reflected back so this one is about a off axis feed antenna so we we have learned that a earlier case is about the axis feed antenna then what are the various feeds supposed to be we are using so we say that uh, we consider that a dipole antenna is to be used as a feeding antenna element we can consider that a horn antenna we supposed to be considered as a feeding element there okay so or even we can use the yaguda antenna as a feeding element so instead of that we just learn that one and one about the feed here instead of consider the another that uh, what feed we are supposed to be used there so we talk about the a, another case of a feed antenna so that is about a, what type of feed we supposed to be used in a parabolic reflector that is about a category feed here. okay so in that case a category feed so horn antenna earlier we say that we have a parabolic reflector this one is about a, draw a smaller one this one is about a parabolic reflector this one is about a focus we say okay so this one is about a parabolic reflector and this one is about a, a diameter now okay so now now instead of that we consider here okay we supposed to consider here the what will be the focus point now okay so we supposed to use a another reflector this one is about a your parabolic reflector and this one is about a another reflector we have and for this reflector this one is about a focus okay so for this reflector and that feed instead of feed is to be placed at the center here so we supposed to use a feed at the bottom of the your reflector there so this one is about a horn we consider that a horn antenna here okay, this one is about a horn antenna thing to be placed here and this one is about a parabolic reflector and this one is about a cut section of the parabolic reflector so whichever the rays are coming out of from this uh, horn okay so this one is about it from horn antenna so all the rays will reach to the main reflector okay so then that rays will be reflected toward the a parabolic reflector and then rays will be propagated likewise okay so this one is a a category feed that is to be used and in the particular a category feed antenna we supposed to use a primary antenna at a convenient position here and uh, that is to be supposed to be at a center of the parabolic there and if supposed to be we are using this uh, category feed type of a structure then spill over and the minor lobe radiation will be less okay so to avoid the spill over so we can use a horn that horn antenna or a feed antenna at the bottom of the parabolic reflector or on the axis of the parabolic reflector and under another feed or we can say that uh, that this one is about a parabolic and this one is called as a hyperboloid okay so that is to be placed at the particular focus point and then this one is the act as a reflector this one is again act as a reflector these are the two reflectors here in this particular feed antenna so we can remove the, or we can minimize that uh, lobe as well as a spill over using the, this type of a structure here and then beam whichever the beam we are coming coming out of from this particular dish antenna so that beam will be broad if we are using a large reflector surface and feed antenna to be placed at the center or at the axis of the antenna there so this way we can consider that is about if a category feed antenna now disadvantage here so this one okay whichever we have considered that hyperboloid here so so that hyperboloid we supposed to be placed in front of that antenna so this one will be act as a, a but you can say that uh, obstacle for this given uh, receiving antenna as well as for the transmitting antenna okay so that's all about what we can say that a parabolic antenna 
or a reflector antenna that we have learned and all this uh, this antenna mostly people are using at home that is about a dish antenna at a home so it has a parabolic reflector this one is about a parabolic reflector and here is a antenna that is placed in front of the dipole here okay so this one is about the antenna is to place here so then your signal will be reflected from this and then it will be propagating here in this given direction okay so this one is about the antenna so it can be a dipole here so if you see that at your home it is just like a what you can say that lnb we say and then there is the antenna so then signal will come come out from this because this one is act as a receiver so it will become here it will be reflected at this and it will be focused all the signal will be focused at the dipole here so that is called a this structure is called as a dish here so so with this uh, uh, we stop here okay so so thank you all of you